After making initial tutorials on converting music to the A432 Hz scale, there have been various uh, comments on and off from people that have a large collection of music in their library and uh, they wanted to know what can they do. Uh, how can they convert their whole entire library to 432 since doing it one by one the way I was showing in my tutorials is a, it's a pretty time-consuming task. So in this tutorial I'll show you how to do batch conversion in uh, Audacity. There is actually a way to do it and I'll show you a step-by-step -step way to do it uh, so that you can basically just open up your files, run this batch and uh, I do suggest to leave it overnight or so because it will take some time but this way it's an automated process and you don't have to do uh, you don't have to convert each song one by one so let me show you how to do it okay so let's start doing our batch conversion I already have audacity open here let's go to file edit chains and this is what batch conversion is called in audacity and here you, you can see there's already a default chain that was, that's created with Audacity. I'll give you a uh, fast rundown of the way it works. You see this is the number of processes, the first, second, and third sequence in the process. And uh, what this conversion does, called MP3 conversion, is that it opens a MP3 track, it normalizes it, and then exports it. So basically, if you have a library of a bunch of tracks that have uh, that that are of various sound levels, and you know when you're playing a track after a track, you don't want to raise volume, then lower volume, then raise volume once again. So what this uh, chain was created for was to normalize the sound levels of all your tracks so that you don't have to play with volume anymore anymore, and you can just um, listen to them. So we're going to create our own chain right now. Let's click on Add, and let's call it Converting from 440 Hertz to 432 Hertz. Before moving on uh, with this chain conversion, I uh, want to emphasize one important point. When you're doing a batch conversion, uh, it's already assumed that there's a specific similarity between the files that you're going to be inputting. Since we're creating a batch conversion that changes the tuning, of each individual track, uh, it's already assumed that each individual track is in the same input frequency. In this case, we're assuming that each track is in the 440 hertz frequency. So uh, when you're converting your library, please make sure that every single track that you're going to be adding to this batch is already in 440 hertz, or whatever frequency you're going to be setting this batch to be in. Uh, because you know if your input tracks, if some tracks are in a different frequency, then the, if we're going to put in a ratio that only works for 440 to 432, uh, those tracks that are in a different input frequency are not going to be converted to 432. So please keep that in mind uh, before uh, adding these files to the batch. So let's start adding these files. Uh, let's start creating our chain. We're going to click on Insert button here. And let's first find that module that actually changes the pitch therefore changes the frequency of the tuning scale frequency and this is the here it is the time scale we're gonna double click on it and so that the parameters appear here and then we're gonna click on the edit parameters button and now we see the already familiar sliding time scale pitch shift module window now we're just going to uh, input our settings. If you, as you see that I already have uh, my settings input here. And um, once again, I want to go over the actual uh, percentage change that's used. As I've told before that I do use the negative 1.776 when I do the conversion. If you want to be exactly right on 432, then you can do the negative 1.818. However, there's really no difference between negative 1.776 and negative 1.818. And what I mean by there is really, really no difference, there's really no audible difference. Because whether you use one or the other, uh, you still fall within the 432 hertz range. 
So please feel free to use any one. Uh, there's really no confusion about it. There's no right or wrong between this or the other. Uh, even if you use negative 1.778 or negative 1.790, they all fall within the range. But if you want to be exact, you want to be specific, um, you can use the you can use this negative 1.818 because that's the most standard one that you'll find, and that's also the one that comes out when you use the formula for converging from say from 440 to 432. If you use the formula that's uh, being displayed right now on the screen, using that formula, uh, you will get this negative 1.818. So. Feel free to use either one. They will both work. So um, in this case, well, let's just stick with this one, negative 1.818. And we're going to click on OK. And we're going to click on OK one more time. And as you see, our first parameter has been already created. Now let's create our second parameter. And in our second parameter, what we're going to do is we're going to normalize the track after the tuning frequency has been changed. We're going to click on Normalize, double click on it, click on Edit Parameters. And the this is already set to what we want it to be, so we're just going to click on OK here. And we'll click on OK. Now, the point of this is that uh, this is something that I've noticed before, is so whenever you change uh, using this module, and also same thing in um, Audition, by the way, uh, whenever you change a, do a pitch shift or change the frequency of a track, uh, the audio levels increase and they start peaking. So we want to make sure to normalize a track so there's no, um, not peaking, so they start clipping. So we want to make sure to normalize a track so there's no clipping after the conversion has completed. So this is why we're adding this as our second step, normalize. And after this, we're going to add our third step, which is and final step, which is simply export. We want to make sure to export the file that we converted. So we're going to click on Export MP3, double click on this, and we're going to click on OK. And once again, we're going to go through our chain of events. We convert it from 440 to 432. Then we normalize it, then we export it. And this is what happens to every individual file that is run in this chain. So we'll click on OK. And now let's see this in action. We're going to go to File, Apply Chain. We're going to select our newly created chain, converting from 440 hertz to 432. And we're going to click on the Apply to Files button. When selecting files for processing, I created four test files. And these files are in 440 hertz. I already checked. So we're going to select them. Click on Open. And the process has started. Now, as I've already mentioned before, um, this process will take some time because you are doing a batch conversion on many files in uh, your music library. And also, you're doing a high quality method conversion, the sliding time scale pitch shift method. So, I do suggest uh, running this overnight. And, uh, you know, depending on how many tracks you have, I've had some uh, people email me telling me that they have a four gigabyte. Uh, um, 40 gigabyte, that is a library of music files uh, that they want to convert. Um, you know, this will take some time and actually may take more than one night to do it. So depending on the size of your music library, you may even want to do several batches because this also depends on your computer processing speed. Um, so perhaps you may want to try out with doing maybe 30 or 20 files at once uh, overnight and see how fast it does and then you may want to do more more or less okay so now that our chain has completed uh, what has happened is that and this is something that you'll notice a file has been created called cleaned and that file will be in the same directory where your original files were that you use for this batch processing 
And when you double click on that file, inside it will be the, f uh, the tracks that were converted. Uh, this is what Audacity does by default. They create this folder called cleaned, and uh, the files are going to be there. OK, so this completes our batch conversion process. And a um, couple uh, pointers that uh, I wanted to make uh, regarding this is that um, you may have a couple questions or a couple issues that you will come by uh, when doing this, especially if you just freshly installed Audacity. And first of all, you may not have the MP3 exporting module. And uh, this is because Audacity does not come with it by default. Uh, it needs to be um, added as a separate library. And to do this basically, well, first of all, you, you want to check whether you have it or not. And let's first do this. Let's go to Audacity, Preferences. And in our libraries, if this is empty, if it, if it doesn't say lame and this version number, then you don't have it installed. And this means you cannot export as MP3s. So you just need to click on this Download button here. It will take you to a page where you can download this module, install it, restart Audacity, and then you'll be able to export as MP3s in order to complete this uh, chain process or even on an individual level. Uh, second of all, um, the other question that you may have is, in what format is, or in what bit rate, uh, rather, is the MP3 conversion um, is doing the process in? What's the bit rate of my output MP3 files. And to do this, um, to check on this basically, it's using your default bitrate that you used uh, to export your previous MP3 files in Audacity. Uh, if you haven't done that before, uh, let's just do our first, let's pretend that we just install Audacity for the first time, that we just uh, also install this MP3 exporting module. So let's just open up our track. This is one of the tracks that we already used, chest track. And then let's say that we want to export it as an MP3. So we're going to go to File, Export, and in Format, we're going to select MP3 files. We're going to click on Options here. And this is the bit rate that it exports for me. Uh, because this is the setting that I set it to, the highest MP3 bit rate possible. I clicked on constant, selected 320 kilobits, kilobits per second, select stereo, and then I clicked on OK. And this is basically what you can do as well. Just select whatever bit rate it is that you prefer, um, whatever bit rate mode that is in this uh, level here. And then um, select your quality, preferred quality, click on OK. And this will be your preset from now on. OK, so basically, this should answer the two questions that I'm assuming that uh, you may have um, after looking at this tutorial. And uh, as always, if you have any other questions, please just let me know. You should be all set from now on to do these conversions uh, without any problems. And uh, this should take care of that question that many of you had which is how do I convert my whole entire library to the 432 hertz. All right. Thank you for your time, and take care.